Would uh, listing the product or the product's appearance uh, on the Internet anywhere always constitute causing confusion? I mean, you have to assume somebody's going to look at it at some point and might be confused. I, I'm trying to — I don't quite know the extent to which your test has any limits uh, at all. No, I don't think listing it on the internet in general would be actionable because it needs to be — there needs to be a proximate link to particular U.S. confusion. So just well, the possibility that somebody might see it and become confused is not enough. It needs to be that this particular use directly that, — that confusion will flow directly from a particular use. Well, uh, your distinction — I think you said two things that sound exactly this, the same to me. I mean, let's say there is um, an appearance on the Internet. Somebody looks at it, and that person thinks, oh, that's a nice bowl of a watch, uh, uh, or that doesn't look too good. Uh, is that enough? No, I don't think so. And I think in the, in the Internet context, I think even under a petitioner's test, if a website is — targeting U.S. consumers so U.S. consumers can purchase the good from the website or the website will ship the goods into the United States, that is, that, that is actionable. But just the possibility that somebody might see something on the Internet would not satisfy any proximity. Well, but I mean, I, let's say it's, you know, uh, an influencer, whatever that is. But, you know, somebody, somebody — a lot of people look at it and, and uh, they see the watch. Um, is that enough? So, uh, 100,000 people see the ad. It doesn't say, here's how you can get it or we'll ship it to you. It just is featured on somebody famous, you know, and that causes a lot of people to not like it or like it, whatever. Uh, so absolutely. So in a hypothetical where it is foreseeable and sufficiently direct that consumers in the United States will be confused, we do think that would be actionable, and we think that's so a virtue, those, not a problem of our test. What are those uh, adjectives again? So, so. I think it's uh, — the Court has not ex explicated exactly what the proximate cost test would be, but I think and foreseeable direct. and direct, exactly. That, that's, that's, a, that's a little bit of my gloss, but I think that's, that's the, the, the gist of it. And, and, but I think a key limitation on that would be what relief would be available. And the injunctive relief, in order to enjoin that, it would need to be an injunctive relief specific to the Lanham Act violation, which is the confusion of U.S. consumers. So you could tell the website you cannot ship these goods to U.S. consumers, but you can't tell it not to ship the goods to anybody. And if there's no relief, if U.S. consumers are 5 percent of the people who see this, and so there's really no injunction that would prevent the harm to U.S. consumers without being w overbroad, there wouldn't be any relief that's available. But I do think we want that situation to be covered by the Lanham Act, because otherwise it is just a license for people to go to the other side of the border or go an in any other country and put things online that are impairing the goodwill of U.S. products. And because their physical actions are, lo are occurring abroad, they would be immune. And I, I, I don't think that's I don't think that's the best reason.